Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Fernando Mata in the five-minute pool on ICC. I remember playing a Evans Gambit against this guy, so I'm actually going to play a Roy Lopez this time around. And we'll take on C6. You guys know I like exchange variations, so why don't we offer to play an endgame? <laughs> we'll do it like this. Now knight b3 is the move. Yeah, they take d1. Usually bishop d7 or bishop g4 sometimes is played. Bishop d6, um, also fine. I'll play knight c3 and then look to follow up with bishop e3 most likely, attacking this pawn on c5. So they play bishop e6 in reply. Yeah, I think bishop e3 is a decent move. So attacking that pawn. They can play b6 and reinforce it. Um, if knight d5, probably they'll castle, because knight d5 would be threatening knight takes b6 to some extent. Yeah, let's do this. So if castles, maybe a4, looking to break up their pawns on that wing. a4, they can play a5. Still, let's do that. I want to see if I can weaken this b5 square. Okay, so they just develop knight e7. So if a5, are there going to be mass exchanges on this square? Like say, a5, knight takes d5, e takes d5, bishop f5, attacking c2. Hmm, that looks interesting though, I'm going to try it. Ah, you know what they can do? They can take twice on d5, and if I take back, then rook takes d5, bishop takes h2. That might be the issue. Hmm, yeah, I think they had bishop takes d5 right there, I didn't notice. All right, so in this position, I was actually thinking to take, and if they take c2, maybe play b7 check. The little sacrifice. I'm not sure how sound that is, though. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Let's try. So take and in, intending this uh, b7 check move. They could also simply take back, though. Like, maybe that's what they should do. Yeah, simply take back, and now I have to deal with the threat on c2. Hmm. Maybe this isn't so good. Rook takes a6, bishop takes c2. If I bring my rook over, let's say, bishop takes b3, take here. Nah, that's not going to work. So do I have to play a lame move, like rook dc1, for instance? That would be a shame, if so, but it might be forced. All right, let's do it. King b7 is so useful, though. Yeah, they could just play that move and scoff at me for having uh, misplaced my pieces like this. Hmm. How to gain counterplay now? Because I feel like bishop e5 is coming very quickly. c4. Maybe I have to play c4. I really need to reroute this knight, though. Like knight d2. Hmm. Knight d2... Bishop e5, knight c4, rook takes d5 as possible. We're just down a pawn. Okay. Tough spot right here. What to play? Knight d2, bishop e5. I can't even play c4 there. I also kind of want to sacrifice something on c5, but I'm not sure it's really working. Okay, let's give this a shot, though. If bishop e5, maybe just rook a2 and play the position. Guard the b2 pawn. Okay, um, let's bring this back. He's got a full two-minute time advantage on me right now. I should be, like, slapping myself for this time management. <laughs> maybe b4 is a move I can get in someday. but it would require the right set of circumstances. Yeah, so he expands. b4 take, knight b3, trying to go c5. Looks suspicious. Can play g3. Rook a3 maybe? Hmm, doesn't do much. All right, I'm still gonna try to maneuver this piece. Try to get it to c3. Maybe some greener pastures. Even on c3, it's unclear where to go from there. Like maybe knight a4 and attack b6, rook a3, rook b3. 
Everything I'm looking at here takes ages to implement, though. Bishop d3. Okay, let's just do this. Attack the bishop. Not sure that was the best move for him. If bishop e2, I can play rook c2. If bishop e2, knight c3, I hang the pawn on c4, so that would not be good. At least I'm catching up on the clock a little bit. Now he's probably going to go back with the bishop. Okay, let's just bring this back here. I don't really want it on light square. Bishop g6 was coming. I also want to guard my back rank. Let's come here with this knight. Just kick that rook out. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Still can't get b4 in. It's frustrating. All right, let's bring this back and just offer to repeat the position. He probably knows he's better, so I am unsure if he's willing to repeat. Ah, he has that move. Okay. I can't take because the back rank mate. Gotcha. So let's come here. F4, bishop d2. Hope for the best. You can put that bishop on g6 now, though. Or bishop e5 to d4. I probably need to swap stuff, rook e1, but bishop g6 to d3. Yeah, that pawn's going to be a hard one to defend. Bishop e5. Hmm. Okay, let's try our hand with this move. Going bishop c3, trying to get b4 in. It's about all the counterplay I foresee right now. If he takes, I have to take with the knight. I feel like my knight has been on c3 like 11 billion times <laughs> this game already. Yeah, I couldn't take with a rook because rook e1. Um, pawn takes looks horrible. Those knights and blitz games, though, don't underestimate them. You never know. Um, f3. No, I can't play f3. Okay, let's take. F3 would have been highly illegal. Okay, let's play B4. I gotta get some activity. If he takes, I'm going C5. Just pushing and trying to open up a play along the C file. So 42 seconds to my opponent's minute 20. If B5, I have C6 check. That's what I'm looking at. Um, check. Yeah, C6 check, followed by Knight C5. Almost certainly I should play this move next. So a6 is under attack. What's he going to do about that? He kind of has to eliminate that Check. pawn. Yeah, now we get this in. Knight takes b4 coming. c7, is that anything? No, let's take here. Because now rook a6 check. Wow. Does he have rook c5? He might. That'd be kind of crazy if so. Yeah, check king here. I can't take the rook. But I can give a check. Okay, let's try check. this. Let's check. check here. Just seeing where his king goes. Crazy position. Goes back. Okay, let's come here. Rook a8, maybe. Our knight's dangerous. Knight a6 could be coming in. I need to solve my back rank issue, though. That's priority number one. Probably h4. Yeah, let's do this. He's going to check. check on e1. Check. Okay, let's come here. Try to set up some mating nets. Also, f4 is under check. attack. Ooh, now we're going to build warning. that pawn. Checkmate. Or checkmate him. Wow. <laughs> Not sure I deserve to win that uh, game, YouTube, but it happened. <laughs> Like, all game, I was looking for a way to get in on the queen side, and finally it happened in time pressure for him. But my position was super sketchy when he had the two bishops plus play in the center, and I was just bashing my head against the wall on the queen side. So let's go back and take a look at that. 
So Roy Lopez, exchange variation, F6. Uh, I played the white side of this line in a game against uh, Eugene Varshavsky, who turned out to be a um, famous cheater. So I played him at uh, the World Open many years back, and it turns out this guy was uh, using computer assistance during the game, uh, or allegedly. He was actually never uh, caught in the act, but he was kicked out of the tournament, and he has since been, I believe, pretty much barred from every major chess tournament in the U.S. Um, I actually wrote a chess.com blog about it. Uh, I'll put it in the, the comments or the, the description if you're interested in uh, checking that out. But random side note, he played that line, this exact line against me. Uh, it's not so easy for white to get an edge against this F6 move. And I played this too for black. Uh, it kind of runs counter to what you uh, would expect in the opening because we're often taught, like, don't move your F-pawn this early. But black protects E5 reliably, and they can do with the slight damage to their king, you know, opening the light squares around their king because I have no light square bishop remaining. Uh, moreover, white doesn't have that many pieces in the attack yet. There is no attack to speak of. So I just play D4, take, knight takes, C5, knight back to B3. So the queens get traded. Yeah, here, as black, I've usually played bishop d7 or bishop g4. Uh, bishop g6, bishop d6 is also possible. And I don't really know the theory too well about this exact position after bishop d6. So I'm going to stick on the engine. The engine likes knight a5. That's kind of a bid to frustrate black's development since this bishop cannot move for fear of losing the b7 pawn. So that makes sense. Although moving the knight another time is... A little counterintu counterintuitive. I just played a routine move, knight c3. He went bishop e6. I played bishop e3, gaining a tempo on this pawn. But black can use these pawns in a way that restricts white's knights. As you can see, I don't have a lot of like useful squares to jump into. d5 is possible, um, which is the move that I played. But yeah, the, the computer already likes black after this move. So a4 is another possibility, trying to come up to a5. I didn't necessarily like that when he could take and double up my pawns, but maybe he wouldn't even do that. Yeah, I have a feeling that um, my knight c3, bishop e3 plan is too routine here. You probably have to have something pretty precise if you want to demonstrate an advantage. I wouldn't be surprised if it was this knight a5 move. Um, I recall some uh, fischer spassky games in this line. There's one relatively famous game that Fischer won from the white side of this uh, in their 1992 return match in uh, former Yugoslavia, and I don't know if it was with bishop d6 or a different move, but safe to say the way I played it in the game was uh, not best. So black castles, and I have a hard time breaking down their position, because I'm not going to be able to like assault their pawn chain with just my pieces. I need some pawn support, and I need a pawn lever like a4, a5 to try to take b6 and kind of open them up. Uh, probe for weaknesses. But knight e7 was a good reply, just developing. I played a5, they took, took, bishop f5, and all of a sudden, threat on c2. Whoops. Yeah, threat of bishop takes c2. So I took. I wonder if they could get away with this. I was thinking d7 check, check would be interesting, trying to bait them into this, check. and then check, and then move the rook. Whereupon black has several weak pawns, although even this is probably acceptable for black. But I see after b7, they don't necessarily have to take that pawn. Yeah, they could play king b8 or maybe king d7. Engine likes king b8, knight a5, take and take, or knight c6. But Check. knight c6, I just lose this. Check. We get a line like this where black winds up a pawn to the good. Yeah, I'm just much worse here, down a pawn. Oh, and before I forget, there was one other line I was curious about, because I think here, I was wondering if black could take on d5. Ah, no, they lose two minors if they do this. For some reason, I was thinking this Check. tactic was possible, which it is. But uh, I do have bishop and uh, knight versus the rook, so this would be acceptable. That was a hallucination. For some reason, I thought, like, they could take, and they're winding up uh, an exchange ahead at the end, but clearly that's not the case. Weird. <laughs> okay, so going forward a little bit after uh, I took on b6, it seems like they should take on c2, maybe. I'm sure they're, they're also better in this case, though. I mean, I don't know. Um, 
I said it seems like they should take on C2, but the way the game played out was completely fine for Black. They just recapture, and they have a good pawn structure. They've undoubled their C pawns. The king can come up to B7, where it's nicely settled and defending the A and the B pawns, and they still have the threat of bishop take C2. So maybe that's even simpler, just recapture. So I played rook dc1, and it was pretty apparent I was much worse at this point. I don't have a great way forward on the queen side, and therefore I have no good plan. I was just trying to maneuver this knight, because unless this knight is going to sacrifice itself on c5 or somehow do some damage coming into a5, that is a classic misplaced piece. It has no future on the b3 square. It's completely restricted by its pawns. So knight d2, he played g5. I started moving around. Not sure bishop d3 accomplished much. I just go and attack that bishop. So here I could have played f3. Ah, interesting. Cutting off the bishop's retreat, so stopping this. That weakens this bishop, but it is held by my rook now. So how does he save that? He has to play b5, allowing the bishop to... Whoops, that's not a diagonal line. Or the diagonal line I wanted to draw. Um, that stops the, the trap of the bishop by enabling bishop takes c4. So knight d2, and it might be okay for white. I mean, I guess black has the, a piece that's on the verge of um, having to be exchanged on c4, so the engine thinks it's about equal. Yeah, I didn't think about f3. Blocking the bishop. So I just did this, and he came back, and now this bishop is ready to transfer to this diagonal, where it's well placed. So I just played the rook back to c1. Rook e4, knight d2. I'm still worse. I was making up a little bit of time at this point, and the game was sharpening up. I thought this was a good move when I saw it, f5, because I cannot take for fear of getting Check. checkmated on the back rank. So I played rook back here, threatening to take the pawn. He played f4, makes sense, just cramping me. So for the moment, I have all of these squares covered. He can't bring his rooks in. To any of those squares. But he starts wiggling in further, so bishop e5 looking to come to d4. And now I pretty much have to go for it on the queen side. You know, I've been saying like the entire game I've been trying to get something going on that wing, and the time has come, the walrus said, <laughs> to talk of many things. Uh, but no, the time has come to attack him on this wing, and I got to get something going against c5 or b6. Otherwise, I think his presence on the e-file his clear dominance on the king side, it's going to be too much. Like, this rook is coming in. Now, I'm not surprised the engine gives such a favorable assessment for black. So instead, he should have just came in immediately to e2, it looks like. This is getting a little sharp, though. I mean, here, and I can play c5 again. He can play d3. Ah, so maybe his d pawn is dangerous. That was kind of a non-factor in the game, but I could see that. So he can actually ignore these pawns because, uh, let's say I push, king c7, yeah, d6, he can just take it, something Check. like d6 here, here, he can just play d2 at the end. And his pawn is stronger than mine because my rook needs to remain on the back rank to uh, avoid checkmate. And now it's attacked and also he's added one attacker to the e1 square, so I don't have time to queen or anything. Okay. So black is doing very well, but he needs like a specific continuation to prove it. Instead, though, he played rook e4. I traded, and I went for it with b4. So this apparently makes my position even worse. The computer says just chill out and play b3. But when you have 47 seconds on your clock, and you've been waiting the entire game to get in a pawn break on the side of the board where you feel you should be attacking, you're probably not going to hesitate when the time comes to um, actually do it. <laughs> when you can finally get it in. So I played it. Take c5. This looked a little scary for him. Once again, it, the computer is uh, nonplussed, and it says just push this pawn. So now this pawn becomes dangerous. Okay. D6, check. or c6 check. King c7. Yeah, he's got this well under control. So a sober move or two might have been able to refute this attack, but we're in mutual time pressure at this stage. Check. I feel like once I got the knight to c5, things were starting to look uh, dicey for him, and I was soon able to turn the tables entirely. Here still b3 is good. Fascinating. 
So just pushing this pawn, and this always like kind of drags my knight back or distracts me from attacking his king and using my C and D pawns. So knight takes b3 and I assume take here. What if rook takes a6 then? Ah, uh, rook d1 check. check. Okay. So swap the rooks. And then after this, not only is he threatening my knight, but this threat is renewed. The back rank checkmate. He took d5, check. however. I took here. King b6. Hmm. King d6 is better. Staying away from the queen side. But king here, I take b4. So all of a sudden, I've evened up the material, and we're attacking his rook. The c6 pawn is well supported, and rook a6 is a plan. And I saw the move. I think I even mentioned it before he played it. The move that he plays next, it looks like it just loses, but... Uh, check. Yeah, so after check, king here, the point is I can't take the rook, because once again, I get mated, this familiar back rank theme. Check. So I checked him again. And he should go right back to b6. Oh, that's funny. I thought I could play uh, rook check. b7 and win, but he goes to a5 and he's actually attacking my knight, so I don't have time to checkmate him with rook a1. His king looks pretty precarious out here on a5, though. So maybe I could just play a move like that. This game is completely up for grabs, though, with this amount of time. And I mean, I like white's chances with black having this... Uh, well... He has limited time, but uh, I guess I like White's attacking chances if everything else were equal. Maybe the time kind of makes it uh, more of a 50-50 proposition as to who's going to win this game. But he played king back to c8, and now his king is kind of locked in back there. I played rook ca1, so just fleeing the file. Now I'm ap apparently winning. Rook here, f3 would be best. I do have to take a timeout and make luft for my king, make sure my king doesn't get trapped. I just played h4. Check. He came down check, we check. traded, and then here, he pushes the pawn, but then I get a knight d5. A nice centralizing knight move. Yeah, and now the threat is knight b6, and he has an impossible time parrying that threat. Knight b6 followed by c7 in the event of uh, king d8. Yeah, I'm just winning here. Mate an 11, according to the computer. My king is safe enough for check. the moment. And here he ended check. up getting mated by going to the corner. But... Um, he could have done this, but it's it's very similar. Like check, check here, check, check, and I'm going to get a queen and win. Apparently, rook d7 is even faster. Because there I'm threatening knight b6, check, king over, rook b7. So this rook plus knight plus c-pawn is a nice attacking unit that wins the game for me. My king is safe enough over here. I mean, he can check. play g3, check, but check. he exposes my king ever so slightly and doesn't have any follow-ups. The bishop's just a spectator over here. Okay, so we were able to whip up a, a counterattack right at the end for all the marbles when b4 was played, but objectively, um, we were getting outplayed in the opening and middle game. But, um, you know, Blitz is uh, more than the opening and middle game sometimes. It's uh, time management, it's the end game, it's seizing your chances when they're available. All of those things rolled into one. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another video. So thank you guys for watching. Bye.